Oh man, there is way more than 10 people out there. <laughs> All right, Steve, let's go. First, I'd like to start out by introducing this kid. Yes, with the mullet. He grew up in Mile City, Montana, and loved to collect toy tanks and airplanes, and he wanted to be a pilot more than anything in the world, but unbeknownst to him, he would one day aspire to be a doctor in the developing world. As adorable as he was, he was not exactly set up for success. His dad was taken away for prison at a young age, so he spent his formative years without a father. And consequently, his mother, a nurse and then a single mother, had to support him and his two siblings alone. Throughout high school, he thought he was pretty cool and definitely thought he was funny. In fact, he still does. <laughs> he was, however, painfully average. He played one sport, did homework only on occasion, and studied basically never. All of this added up to one comically uncompelling applicant for university. He sent in his very average application to Montana State University and was accepted, despite their extreme and rigorous vetting process. <laughs> what are you guys laughing about? <laughs> Regardless, his adventure had begun, and he began adapting to university life, but things really started to kick off for him when he discovered the MSU Leadership Institute. It was here that, for the first time, he was surrounded by people that not only told him that he could attain greatness, but that he would. The LI gave him the skills, confidence, and support he needed to truly realize his potential that only others saw in him. Mentors and teammates kept pushing him and demonstrating their faith in him time and time again. <clears throat> Eventually, that kid from the first slide became the guy who is making noises on stage right now. And I've gotten to do things that I never thought imaginable, not because I was born into the right family or possessed some innate ability, but because thanks to those who believed in me. This empowerment and encouragement is doubtlessly the greatest privilege I have ever enjoyed, but the LI also opened unbelievable doors. Last December, the Leadership Institute was reached out to by an organization that had tragically lost their director. Through some small world type connection, they reached out and needed some help called Tiny Tim and Friends. Tiny Tim and Friends is an HIV clinic located in Lusaka, Zambia and provides medical, nutritional, and psychosocial support to HIV-positive children, adolescents, and pregnant women in Zambia, and I have the distinct honor of being selected to work with them to provide leadership development support. Thanks to the skills, tools, and support of the LI, I executed trainings from avoiding micromanagement to goal setting for the senior level management of a Zambian NGO 10,000 miles away through a webcam and suddenly the entire world shrunk down to the size of a computer screen. Amazingly, they invited me to come deliver these trainings in person, and through the remarkable generosity of an anonymous sponsor, someone else who believed in me, I found myself chest deep in Zambia, and I transformed from Eastern Montana kid to Mzungu, the local word for white dude. But I was fortunate. I was altogether unassuming and would never have been able to do what I did if someone had not believed in me. And this is hard, to believe in the unassuming. In a world of clashing resumes and fighting badge winners, it's easy for people to fall through the cracks as we stop and focus on the best and brightest. We are often so caught up in our own personal struggles that we forget that we are the product of mysterious, invisible events and people that helped us to get where we are now. So what do we do with this privilege? I plead to you, pay it forward. And here's how I'm trying to do just that. It's clear I'm no graphic designer, but I'm starting what I'm currently calling the Institute for Global Development. I want to connect the next generation of global change makers, it's really beautiful, with service learning opportunities around the world. I want to pay forward the privileges others selflessly gave to me. The Institute for Global Development will connect students with carefully vetted, grassroots international development NGOs all around the world. IGD will give students the opportunity to become the sculptors of tomorrow that we need today. But it will do far more than just network. More important than connecting students, it will teach them. Students go all around the world through global service organizations every day and actually often do more harm than good. It fuels the problematic white man's burden ideology. 
and IGD will teach students how to engage in global development service work in a sustainable and, more importantly, ethical way. To accomplish all of this and more, I'm working with an international global development and service nonprofit, Om Prakash. Om Prakash offers a network of vetted organizations in over 40 different countries, and what's more, they have a robust, thoughtful, and customizable curriculum for students to explore. But down the road, I'd like to see a certificate program at MSU and probably some other stuff. But for now, it's time to prove that it works. Starting this spring, I will pilot this program with 18 to 24 students from MSU, and they'll go through the curriculum and, should they desire, apply to work with one of Om Prakash's partner organizations. But finally, I need all of your help. I need rookies and experts, movers and shakers, scholars and first years. I need stoked, outgoing change makers with a desire for international development experience. And I need exposure, so I'm here. And I'm absolutely grateful for this opportunity, so thanks for listening.